Hello YouTube, welcome back to another before and after. So today we'll be looking at a movie with a giant gorilla, giant crocodile, and giant flying bat. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So, um, yeah, this is, um, this is gonna be insane. Yeah, there's not really any other way to describe this. This is insanity. And apparently, it's based off of an arcade game. I had no idea of this until my friend brought it up very recently, like, two days before I'm gonna go see it. So, like, yeah. I amazingly don't know much about this game, so... I don't know, maybe it has very interesting lore, which I am just not acquainted with. So, unfortunately, I cannot see if this movie is accurate or not. I really should do more research. But, um, yeah, this looks like a really fun movie, honestly. A very fun popcorn movie, to be specific. Yeah, this doesn't really look like it's going to be interesting or anything. Just sort of giant gorilla fights giant crocodile and flying giant wolf. It all makes sense. So, um, yeah, I don't think that anyone in this movie is going to be taking any of this seriously. So, like, I'm just sort of expecting to have a lot of fun with this. And, yeah, that, that's pretty much as far as my expectations go. So, yeah, I'm pretty much looking forward to it, though. Pretty much sold me immediately with a giant wolf. And then when it was revealed to be a giant flying wolf, then I was just like, okay, take my money. Just take it. I mean, I'm using Movie Pass, but just take it. So, um, yeah. I'm, uh, pretty excited to go see a giant flying wolf. That, that's just going to be amazing. Yeah, I'm probably gonna be rooting for the wolf here because wolves are awesome. Yeah, they're, they're one of my favorite animals, so, yeah, I'm just sort of gonna be rooting for the wolf this whole time. Wolf's gonna be truly amazing, and the rest of it, I, I don't know, it'll be fine, but that wolf is gonna be awesome! So, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this, and hopefully it'll lead to an arcade game movie universe. We'll get Pac-Man, Alien Invaders, and then eventually... Mortal Kombat with Pac-Man and a giant gorilla and flying wolf. I'm just saying, it's gonna be amazing, guys. It's gonna be amazing. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this, or at least having a fun time. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. See you guys in the after part. So, I have now gone back from seeing Rampage, and it was insane. But also pretty fun, admittedly. Although its story is very generic, as are the characters. Yeah, the characters in this, they... They can be decent for what I'm pretty sure would be an AI partner. Yeah, okay, so, um, Kate. She seems like an AI partner, and that's really all. Like, that is really all I got from her. It's just like, hey, sometimes you get an AI partner in games. Kate would be a decent live-action adaptation of them, I guess. I mean, like, she's there, she has a bit of a backstory, but it's not really interesting, and once it's stated, that's kind of it. So, uh, yeah. She's fine, I guess. Not all that much else to say about her. Um, then there's Davis. I probably should have talked about first, but I was on the subject of AI partners. So, um, Davis is an introvert? Like, yeah, I'm sorry, I really don't see The Rock as an introvert. There are many things you can see The Rock as, but an introvert is not one of them, or at least not for me. Um, but I mean, like, I guess I could see a working. I can't actually see The Rock as a decent actor if given the right script and stuff. So, like, I really do think that he could have pulled this off. It's just that the script was not doing that at all. They keep on saying that he's an introvert, but you see him interacting with people fine, except for when one girl hits on him, but that's kind of it. 
And then everyone's just like, man, why don't you relate to people? And they're just like, because animals are the ones that get me. Oh, well, why is that? Oh, I can't get into it halfway into the movie. It's because I was in a war, and I saw poachers after that, and then I saved a gorilla, and then I went to a zoo for some reason instead of continuing to save animals from poachers. And then I... Just actually, no, that, that's just sort of where my life's led up to the, to this point. So, um, yeah. Now I gotta go save my gorilla friend because he's my gorilla friend. That That's kind of his character right there. Um, so, I mean, like, he's got a pretty generic backstory, but I mean, like, I'll give him this. The Rock is pretty fun in it. I especially love the scene where he's trying to fly a helicopter and fails, mostly because I saw San Andreas, so that was funny to me. That was kind of the only reason why that was funny to me. So, um, yeah, Davis is a main character. Not an interesting one, but a main character, so that's good for him, I guess. Yeah, okay, so he's fine, but I mean, like, still, The Rock does give him enough personality to, I think, make him at least an enjoyable main character. Although, Kate is a little bit more generic to me, but still, she's fine as is. Then we got Russwell. He's an agent, and apparently, according to a lot of people in this movie, despite not really having this mentality, he's a cowboy-like guy. I did not see that at any point in this movie until they just sort of said it, but, uh, sure, yeah, he's a cowboy, sure, whatever. So, um, yeah, he's, a uh, he's honestly kind of fun in this, actually. I think the actor just sort of brought a lot to it, and really, that's what made him one of my favorite characters in this. He was just really pretty enjoyable, and, yeah, I just sort of liked seeing him on screen. He was a fun character. Then we got Claire and Brett. Oh, boy. Okay. So, uh... Kate used to work for a gun. Kate used to work for an organize for a company, and they were evil. And she worked on a cure for stuff, and then it turns out that company was actually using it for evil reasons, even though they were obviously evil. So I don't know why she worked for them in the first place. Outside of her brother was dying, although apparently she was a very gifted scientist. So apparently no other organization was actually willing to hire her. Anyway, though Claire and Brett, they they're pretty much the ones in charge. And they, they really want to make mutated animals. I have no idea why, but this is illegal now, so they gotta go do it up in space. Because that makes it legal, I guess. I don't know. And, yeah, then, then some of their experiments come crashing down to Earth, and then, yeah. Then wolves and gorillas and crocodiles, and they get mutated. That was kind of it for them. So, uh, yeah, Claire and Brett are very boring. <laughs> okay, well, at least they would be. If not for the actors, for some odd reason, having a blast with this. Like, they are having a lot of fun with this, and honestly, I have no idea why. There is nothing about these roles that seem interesting in the least. But these actors are just like, you know what, screw it, we're gonna have the time of our lives with this for some reason. And they do! I'll give them that. They have fun. So, uh, yeah. Good for them, I guess? Yeah, they're pretty enjoyable in it. Mostly because their plan is very stupid, although they keep on acting like, Oh yeah, we got a genius plan. Nothing can stop us. Until I get- until Claire gets in by George, and then Brett just sort of gets killed by debris. Yeah, so on the subject of that, there's a lot of- there's surprisingly a decent amount of gore in this, like, okay, there's not a ton, because, well, it's PG-13 and stuff, but there's surprisingly a decent amount, um, up to the point where this movie actually opens up with a gore shot. I can safely say that I was not expecting that. I was actually expecting it to open up with, oh, I don't know, the title? Yeah, okay, one thing that actually really annoyed me in this movie is that I always try to record the title of the movie, like, for three seconds or something, 
This movie decided to wait till the very end, which is something that happens quite a bit, admittedly, but it's still really annoying to me, because I wait and I spend, like, ten minutes with the phone on, just, like, really just sort of waiting and hiding the light and stuff, so then no one thinks I'm actually filming the whole movie or something. And really, it's just annoying to me, and I really want movies to stop that, because when the end, because when Rampage did actually pop up on the screen, it was, like, for ten seconds, and for most of those seconds, I was turning on my phone, and I'm sorry, that was really annoying to me, and I missed the title, although I did record the wolf thing at the end credits, oh, and I also waited throughout the whole entire end credits, so then I could just see Rampage come up in the very generic credits font, so then it would just be there, so then I'd be like, hey, I finally recorded the title, I mean, it's not the way that I want to record it, but it's there, I really do find that dumb, I'm sorry, I hate it when movies do that, and it's really annoying, especially when I'm trying to actually just film like three stupid seconds! Anyway, so um, yeah, th there's some gore in the opening, which uh, was kind of surprising, I didn't expect that, and then there's some gore splattered in throughout, and yeah, it's honestly pretty decent gore shots, if I'm to be honest. So, uh, yeah, moving on. Uh, then there's Burke. He, uh, he's a soldier, and his team, including him, is all killed by this wolf. Which, for some reason, is played up as a horror scene, which is weird. But, um, yeah, they get killed by the wolf. Bummer. Though, the reason why I bring up Burke here is because I was certain that he was going to be in this movie more, because, like... It seemed like there was a bit of a past to him, given all the scars that he had and stuff, and I'm pretty sure there's a moment in the trailer where, um, he's in the city, and he's, like, and he's, like, using a grenade launcher or something. I'm pretty sure that moment happened in that trailer, and it's, like, for a split second, but I'm pretty sure that I saw it, and I was very, very surprised when he died. I was like, did he survive that? somehow? Is he gonna end up at a later point that, nope, he's just dead. Okay. So, um, yeah. Admittedly, I did not expect that, really. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, he had some more potential, I think, really. But, yeah, I mean, he was fine for the scenes that he's in. I mean, like, he's really sort of there just to die, but given that, he's fine. Then there's Blake. <sighs> what a generic character. Like, this is the most cliched character in this whole movie. And that's saying something, because we got characters like Kate and Claire and Brett. But out of all of them, there is Blake. Here's my interpretation of Blake. Okay, so we got a giant gorilla, a giant wolf, and now a giant crocodile. So, okay, sir, so what do you think that we should do about this? Let's get a bomb. Let, let's, let's, what? You know, they're in a city right now. Let's evacuate the city. It's a really big city, sir. It'll take a while for it to be evacuated. I don't care. Just get a bomb here now. Let's blow crap up. Well, why, sir? We, I'm pretty sure, we actually got some people over here who know about this subject matter, and, and they're experts in this field, and they actually do have some pretty decent solutions. I don't care. Bomb! Okay, fine, we'll go with your stupid bomb idea. And that's pretty much his character. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my interpretation of that. Um, so, yeah, pretty much he just wants to blow up stuff until he sees that, well, this was a really bad plan, and then just decides, okay, fine, you guys can do what, what your plan was. That would actually probably save a whole lot more lives, but I was stupid and decided not to do that. So, yeah. That... That's his amazing character, I'm sure everyone's gonna cheer at that, although honestly he's pretty fun in this for just being so cliche, but um, yeah, really that's kind of all that there is to him, and when that's the case, yeah, you don't really have that great of a character, but still, he's pretty fun. Um, then there's the three animals slash monsters. So, uh, let's start off with the main, let's start off with one of them, which was my personal favorite, the flying porcupine wolf. Why does it have a porcupine and flying bat mutation thrown in? I don't know. Apparently that was just a part of the canister because why not? But, um, yeah, so, uh, that, 
it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's very beautiful to see, but, um, there isn't much to it. Like, there is absolutely nothing to it. But it's still very beautiful to see, and it was one of my favorite characters just for the visuals alone, which I'll get to in a minute. But, um, then there's also the crocodile. I feel bad for the crocodile. It was doing nothing. Nothing at all. It was swimming around, minding its own business, until it got mutated, and then it continued swimming around, minding its own business. Until it got annoyed by a stupid frequency. So then, it swam to where the frequency was, minding its own business. Not harming anybody, and just sort of bumping into things a bit, but that was kind of it. That, that's all that was doing. I mean, it wasn't purposely doing that, it was just in his way. And then it gets attacked. And then it fights back the best it can. And then when the frequency is stopped, then it just realized that it was working with its own enemies, so it tries to kill them because, well, you know, animals and stuff. And then, then it's killed. <laughs> this poor crocodile. It was doing nothing. It was being innocent crocodile, and yet, no, we gotta kill it because, you know, it, it's a giant crocodile, so we gotta kill it. And that's what happens. So yeah, it's just a senseless act of violence. I feel so bad for it. Okay, but then there's also George, the gorilla, and he, uh, he's fine, I guess. Um, most of the movie is kind of played up for laughs, or at the very least half of it. Like, he pulls pranks and stuff. It's kind of weird. I mean, like, I, I don't know much about gorillas. Do they actually like pulling pranks? I mean, I honestly don't think that that's wrong or anything. I mean, I'm sure there are some of them that do. It's just kind of random character trait. And that's kind of all there is to um outside of his past, which is his family was killed by poachers and he's the last of his kind. And that's kind of it, really. There's nothing else to him. Okay, well, also he's friends with Davis, but... Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of it. He also has some anger issues, which are only amplified by the mutation and stuff, but that's really kind of all. Other than that, he's it's just a giant gorilla fighting, which is honestly all that I really expected out of him. I didn't expect King Kong levels going into this, so, I mean, I guess for what we got, it's fine, but still, like, I feel like they're gonna add some character to him. Maybe just like flicking people off and stuff sometimes isn't really the best character, but I mean, like, the very least it does add something to him. And yeah, I mean, I guess it's fine. But speaking of his mutation, here we go. Okay. He has none. Yeah, his mutation is he is big, which is something that all the animals get. And he has quicker regeneration, which is, again, something that all the other animals get. So, what has he actually gained from this? Because I really do want to know. The wolf has porcupine spikes that it can throw, it can fly, the crocodile has these huge tusks, but what does George get? He, he's bigger. Yay? I did, okay, great for him, but what else? Is he going to mutate further? Are his mutations more advanced, so they're going to take more time or something? Or is it just this? Maybe that's why the animals were fighting. They were all pissed that they got seemingly pretty painful mutations, but, oh, what did George get? Oh, he got nothing. So, I mean, it's just like, really... That That's really unfair to both George and the other animals, because I'm pretty sure that growing porcupine spikes and tusks would hurt a lot. So, yeah, it's really unfair to all of these guys. So, um, yeah, but, I mean, like, the fighting between them is really awesome. Yeah, that's probably the biggest highlight of this movie, and, well, I think that was pretty obvious going in. Yeah, the fighting scenes are really great. They are all 
it's just really awesome to see. And sure, sometimes, yeah, you're just like, okay, it's just a bunch of CGI animals fighting, which it is, but that doesn't change the fact that a giant flying porcupine wolf versus a giant crocodile with tusks versus a giant gorilla that can regenerate itself. I'm just saying, this is awesome. So, yeah, for visuals alone, I say this movie is worth it, or at the very least, I wouldn't say it's an IMAX or in 3D or anything, I don't know if that'll add to it, but I would say that seeing it on a big screen would actually be a good idea as well. Let's just say that it's amplified so much by that, because it is so awesome being able to see these things fight so big. It really does add to, the, to it a little bit, and honestly, I just really like how the fights were handled. I mean, sure, okay, there are some weird moments where they're just, like, trying to make... They're, like, really trying to build up what the animal looks like, even though they've already shown it in the trailer. So I'm just like, okay, why build this up? Like... In the scene where they first reveal the wolf, that goes on for like five minutes of just, hey, look at that, there's a dead body there. Hey, there's a dead body over here. Wow, well, I mean, I know that we've been called in to kill a giant wolf, but I didn't expect it would be killing things. And then all of a sudden, wolf comes out and starts killing them. And that's, that's kind of the big scene. Oh, and then it destroys a helicopter, which is honestly really awesome. So... Yeah, I mean, like, they do spend quite a while sometimes just building up to this thing. Like, the crocodile, it isn't in this movie until, like, the last half hour. I mean, they show it before, but all that we really see is it in the water getting mutated, and then just sort of it bumping into something while it's gonna go and shove that annoying frequency that's pissing it off. That's all that it's really doing until the last half hour when it decides, oh yeah, I'm in this movie too, I should... Should probably do something so yeah there is quite a bit of kind of pointless build-up seeing as we already know what's gonna be in this movie and yeah that's kind of what we're here for we want to see giant animals fight each other so yeah really it's kind of odd that they spend some time building up to it when well they know what we're here for but still i will say that they did at least put in some more effort there which is something that i will say is pretty it's pretty good there but um yeah, I don't really feel like it was needed in a movie like this, but still, I will say they did put in the effort. So, overall, this movie is, um, it's very, 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 very simple, but who cares? It's giant animals fighting. It's awesome. That's all that you really need to go into this, and yeah, it really does make it worth it, because really, the fight scenes in this are great, and definitely are the biggest standout of this, so... I'd recommend it for that alone. Then there are actually surprisingly some pretty decent performances in here, and also some pretty funny ones as well, like just sort of the over cliche characters and stuff like that. So I will say that it is worth it. And I would say that's also a pretty fun movie as well. And now, on to my own personal theory going experience. This one was very interesting. We got to the movie early. So, like, even before the movie started playing, I've only been to that, like, one or two other times. Um, then just the screen was green for, like, five minutes. I don't know what was going on there, actually. And then they finally started playing the, the movie and the trailers and stuff, and then this woman walked in. <sighs> okay, I don't, I don't know if she made this theater-going experience better better or worse, but she was directly behind us, and every single fight scene, and every single time one of the monsters came out or something, she would gasp, or like, I think that there was even a moment where she screamed, seriously, I don't get why, it was not scary, but yeah, there's even like a moment where she screamed, and she would laugh at Every single joke in this movie, like, every single one of them, even when the whole theater was silent, she would be the one person laughing. Again, I can't decide if she made this theater-going experience awesome, or was just really annoying. It it's really a weird paradox, but honestly, I kind of had fun with someone like that in this theater, so... 
Yeah, I mean, if you guys happen to run across that, I would definitely say it might add to the movie a little bit. Or it might just really annoy you. Either or. Oh, and also, back on to um, what I brought up in my before part with my whole um, uh, arcade game movie universe idea. Which, by the way, it was Space Invaders, not Alien Invaders. I'm an idiot. But, um, yeah, I, uh, it took about an hour in GIMP, or, f well, a few hours. And, uh, I decided to make it, I decided to make the idea, at the very least, an image of it real. So, uh, yeah, here it is, guys. Here's this masterpiece? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty stupid, but at the very least, it looks kind of cool, sort of, kind of. Yeah, okay, I'm just going to show it to you guys. I'm going to film the interior of the theater today, but Deadpool 2's poster is up, so... So you're actually going to see a movie with me? Yes. The last time that you did this was for Baby Driver. Yes. It's been a while. She yeah. she rarely she barely ever goes to movies with me. Just so you know. Yeah, different taste in movies. That's very all. very different. I like good movies. She likes bad. No. I mean, she likes romance, and I like good. No, I like drama and comedy. Like I said, I like good, she likes bad. <laughs> so there's a difference of opinion there. You like horror, that's bad. Hey, horror is great. What are you talking about? No, don't do horror. Horror is great. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. What? I gotta check my email and stuff before I have to go in, and then I'll be phoneless for an hour and a half. Oh, really? <laughs> you mean you don't film parts of the movie? No. I don't even get to check my Facebook account. Really? Because I film like three whole seconds of the title. That's illegal. No, it's not. Well, if, you ha the if you have 20 seconds, then if you have 20, if you have a little bit over 20, then it's illegal. Uh, I've ex I've learned. I had a 30 second clip from a movie, and that was banned immediately. I still don't get I that. I'll go with you to the movie. <laughs> so I'll yeah, the, the movies that she'll go with, go to me with. I can go to the theater with me with. When I need a nap. A giant gorilla, a giant flying wolf, and a giant crocodile. And I need a nap. That, this all makes, <laughs> this all, yeah, the, there needs to be more movies like that, then she'll come. Alright, so we got here before the show even begins. It is what? Eight, eight. Yes. Oh, I was gonna look at the time on your phone. It's actually 7 o'clock. Did it just become 7 o'clock? Yes. Okay, so it's exactly 7 o'clock, right? Mm. Can you double check that? 7 to 1 to order your Okay, it's 7 to 1. <laughs> so, yeah, we got like 9 minutes before this starts. And everything is black. And a man has a flashlight on. <laughs> So yeah, the mystery. Now the screen is just a green screen. There's nothing playing. It's just green. I I don't know what this is. I've never been this early or seen Look, problems with quotes. this. I don't I don't know. They're showing Star Trek. Dumb. Yeah. Cause wait, that's just a green screen. Yes, because you know they used to make green screens. <laughs> Okay, so what did you think of that? I thought it was pretty good. Kind of weird at some part. Like, okay, what was weird? Just the wolf flying. The dog. I mean, the the wolf. Oh, okay, you said wolf. I'm sorry. I heard wolf. bull. I heard you say bull. It was weird. <laughs> okay, but um, yeah. Yeah, the wolf. I'm mostly thinking that that came from genetic mutation. Like, yeah, like it was shot. mutated with well, a flying out. squirrel, I guess. Oh, That's what like, it looked I mean, like. It's just a real powerful animal. Like, I was just like, why exactly mutated with a with a squirrel there? Just like why? 
Was that already in the DNA? Already? Like, was someone wanting to make a flying rat or something in space? I don't... That was very weird. Although, to be fair, I kind of just expected weird from this. Yeah. But was it fun? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was fun. The moon is, like, kind of eerie over there. Do you see it? No. It's right over that light, right there. Oh, I see it. Yeah. You can't actually see it on camera. It's like a eerie crescent moon, but, like, the moon is completely yellow. It's it's cool. Oh, I like it. That is cool. I wish I could actually get that on camera. But, um, yeah, so you liked it. <laughs> yeah, my camera sucks. So, um, yeah, you liked it? Yes. Okay. The moon that I can't film. Oh, there's the war movie for small children. What? Like oh, that, yeah, you know. That, you that's what every kid... Well, to be fair, every kid needs to see a war at some point in their lives. I, I mean, know, it's super it was, important. Well, I know it was, like, in the commercial part. It's like, it's for young children. I'm like, a war. A war. For young children. You know, my dad actually won't let me watch Apocalypse Now just because, even though it was edited... It was a war movie. That that was his whole reasoning. Really? Apocalypse? Apocalypse Now. So yeah, he wouldn't let me watch that just because the simple fact that it was a war movie, not... Be, even though it was edited down for TV, they're just like, nope. And yet, here's a war movie for small children. Kids. Because, you know, makes sense. Yeah, hey, a like guy with said, an ash hat. Sure. Guy with an ash hat over there. Pokemon. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, we are very off of this movie now. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was weird but fun, I guess. Yeah. Better than the bot hunting end. Yes, a anything the is, though, so. So, yeah. You want to say bye or something? Bye. Okay. Okay, so now the whole theater is closed. This has only happened to me one other time.